Critical Discourse Analysis by Norman Fairclough Fairclough's three dimensional models. We are going to talk about them one by one. First of all, we have to know what is the main approaches to CDA and who is the authors and what did they do, okay, in the discourse analysis. The first one, Van Dyke, a socio-cognitive approach and Norman Fairclough made a relational dialectical approach. And the third one, Roth Waddock, made a discourse historical approach. Norman Fairclough, for 1941, is an emeritus professor of linguistics at Lancaster University in England. He is one of the founders of critical discourse analysis CDA as a bait in sociolinguistics. A critical discourse analysis is an interdisciplinary approach to the study of discourse that views language as a form of social practice. CDA is concerned with how power is exercised through language. Norman Fairclough assumes that any case of language is a communicative event. So, there is a three-dimensional model here that Norman Fairclough talks about has developed a model for critical discourse analysis and this model consists of three categories in the model called dimensions. Dimension 1. Text Dimension 2. Discursive practice Dimension 3. Social practice So text, we can't call it description, is the state which concerns the formal properties of the text. This dimension involves the analysis of the language of text and includes features such as lexis, which means choice of words, patterns, and vocabulary metaphor, and grammar, for example, use of modal verbs, nominalization, and also, according to text, we have to deal with cohesion. Cohesion is so important, which is, for example, the use of conjunctions, use of synonyms, etc. And also we have text structure like problem, solution, cause effect, turn taking in conversation. Here we have an example about text. My neighbor was an old witch. My neighbor was an old woman. My neighbor was an old lady. So in this choice of witch, woman, old lady, it expresses an attitude toward as a neighbor. When we choose our word, we express an attitude. This course is about language as a community, so how is that? The words we choose make us feel that we are part of a community. For example, a person who is from a different point of origin will be either stranger, foreigner, refugee. So this course analysis is about text analysis and that any text contains interpretations. The second dimension, discursive practice, or we can call it interpretation. So here, Fergler believes that it refers to the process of text production, distribution, and consumption in society. Here, the analysis takes place at the next level. Looking at this course in this way means paying attention to First of all, force of utterance, which is not looking for a direct action response from the reader in the form of physical activity, but it is clearly rehearsal given. The second one, coherence of text. It should be considered as a property or interpretations, rather than a property of text. Intertextuality, which links a text to other texts, and to its context. Interdiscursivity When texts are made up of heterogeneous elements or various discourse types, such as a mix of formal and informal language in newspaper or article and so on. So the third dimension, which is the final one, social practice or we can say explanation. According to Fairclough, explanation is concerned with the relationship between interaction and social context, with the social determination of process of production and interpretation, 
and their social effects. Language and Society Here it is an analysis of what we call the norm level. So the norm level is so important in language and society. Here we have an important question. What constitutes a social practice? So the answer will be, according to Fairclough, language is a kind of social practice. Three principles that are considered as a social practice. And also the third point, this course contributes to the formation and reflection of social structures. Social practice builds social identities and social relationships. And also social practice contributes to the system of knowledge and the trust. So the summary about everything that we have mentioned before, that critical discourse analysis is very useful when you need to figure out what the center wants to convey to the recipients. And what behavior does the sender want from the recipient. As a matter of fact, the three types are closely related with each other. None of them are indispensable. With the three successive steps united together, the hidden knowledge of linguistic, intertextual, and social factors can be exposed in the analysis of the news discourse. So that's it. Thanks for your attention.